I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. Please take your Bibles and come with me, if you would, to 2 Timothy 3. This chapter is all about the apostasy of the last days. We have looked at the characteristics of these apostates in some previous days that we've already looked at in this and today. We want to look at the results of apostasy in verses 6 through 9. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6 says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and ever able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no far farther, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men as theirs also was. So as we come into these verses, we see several things here. First of all, in verses 6 and 7, it talks about ignorance of the truth. You know, sometimes people are involved in believing wrong or doing wrong simply because they've never been taught. They are ignorant of the truth. And we need to make sure that that is not the case in the lives of some people because it may very well be our responsibility to teach them the truth so that they will not be ignorant of it. But what happens is these apostates by falsehoods, the Bible says here, take advantage of silly women, both spiritually and morally. Notice in verse 6, For of this cause are they which lead in, in the, creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. You know, as, we, as we're thinking about these people being led astray, both spiritually and morally, uh, let me just give you a couple other verses that talk about that. Second Timothy or Second Peter, rather, Second Peter chapter 2, verses 10 through 14 says, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots are they and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of idolatry and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. And then also in Jude chapter 1, and verse, uh, first of all, in verse 4, it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. Verse 10 says, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know actually as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. And we won't take a tremendous amount of time to look at those verses that talk about people being led astray because we've already looked at them as we've gone through those chapters. And if you want to know more about Second Peter 2 or Jude 1, then I encourage you to go to our YouTube uh, page, Danny Jack Ministries, and there you will find uh, books of the Bible titled after those, or books, or uh, playlists rather, named after those books of the Bible where you can uh, listen to more about these people and what they say. Titus chapter 1, and in verse 11 says, Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. So we see here that through their falsehoods, they are taking advantage of people, both spiritually and morally, and they are leading them away. And, uh, and then also we see here that it says in verse 7 of 2 Timothy 3 that they learn, but they do not learn spiritual truth. The Bible says they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about this. In verses 10 and 11, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 and 11 say this, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, 
For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So we see there that very clearly that, you know, he, he talks about this idea that we are live that people are learning, but they're not learning spiritual truth. And the reality is the only way that we can learn spiritual truth is by the Holy Spirit of God who indwells a believer. So, and as we stop and we think about that, as we think about these last days, are we not in an age of learning? Uh, there's all kinds of learning. Learning at a more rapid pace, maybe even than we've ever seen before. Even religious learning, but it is learning that is devoid of the truth. And that's what Paul was talking about here when he says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So in verses 6 and 7, he talks about the fact that this apostasy results in the fact that people are ignorant of the truth, but then also... Uh, not only are people ignorant of the truth, but people have resistance to the truth in verses 8 and 9. In these verses, we see that they oppose the truth as those who withstood Moses. In verse 8, it says, Now as Jannies and John Braves withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Uh, you know, Christ is the truth. So people oppose him. Jesus said uh, in John 1, 14, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 17 of John 1 says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. These people oppress the truth. And, and because Christ is truth, they oppose him. It's interesting, actually, as you think about people who withstand, uh, as, you, as you look into the life of Moses, if you read Exodus 7 through 9, you will find there that these men oppose Moses by imitating what he did. And uh, certainly they were not true, they were not of God, but they were Im able to imitate what he did. And these people will oppress the truth, and they will oppose the truth, because their minds are corrupt. Verse 8 says, Now as Jannies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. So they, ha they are men of corrupt minds. Remember what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 6? And in verse 5, he says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. So there's wicked disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from sex withdraw thyself. He said, listen, they have wicked disputings, they have corrupt minds, and they are void. They are empty of the truth. And they are reprobate concerning the faith. It says in verse 8, Eat now as Johnnies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Friends, there are many people today who are reprobate concerning the faith. Sadly, even many seminaries and Bible colleges at one time stood on the word of God today are this way. They are reprobate concerning the faith. They are no longer teaching the truth of the word of God. They have watered down the teaching, and as a result of that, Everybody who comes out of there is no longer taking the stand that used to be stood, uh, that used to happen. And friends, that's, that's a sign of the last days. It's sad. It reminds us of the importance to be firm in our walk with God. But the truth of the matter is, it is the reality of the last days. And then in verse 9, we see their doom, their judgment, and their doom. It says, but they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men. In other words, it's going to be clear and obvious as theirs also was. Friends, as we look at these results of apostasy, it ought to challenge us that we be very careful in our lives that we are not ignorant of the truth. No person is more blind than the one who will not see. And we need to have our eyes open toward what the Word of God teaches and not just simply base our beliefs on our own thoughts or opinions or the thoughts or the opinions of somebody else or the teachings of some man, but that we make sure that our teaching is based, is the truth of the Word of God. And then there, not only is there ignorance of the truth, but we saw in verses 8 and 9 that there is resistance to the truth. Let's not be resistant to the truth ourselves and to be obe obedient to the truth, but at the same time, Christian, don't be surprised 
when you come in contact with people who will be resistant to the truth. They will be resistant to the word of God because the word of God is the word of truth, John 17, 17. They will be resistant to the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the truth. But that does not negate us of our responsibility of standing for the truth and proclaiming the truth in this apostate age that we live in. Christian, lift up your eyes. Your redemption draweth nigh.